stuff in your, in your comedy. And you're right here in Washington, D.C., in the middle of, I, I guess. Look, if you can't write a joke about Washington, D.C., you need to get out of business right off the bat. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, we can start, we can just start with, the, with, the, with, you know, from Congress on down, you know, they're wasting our money. See, that's why I should be in charge of this country. So I could run this country. You laugh a bit. I could be a very good, I want to be fair. People that want to drink and drive, I think we should have a lane for these people. <laughs> well, now, one lane, both directions. Now, you see, <laughs> you make it home, you know what you're doing. See, I could run this country. Don't get me started about running the country. If I was in charge of this country, now you may not like some of the things I do, or no foreign aid. For two years, nobody would get nothing. Nobody would give us anything, do they? No. We, we still giving money to Bosner Hurst to go. Bosner, her, bo matter of fact, if we can't pronounce your name, <laughs> you ain't getting diddly squat up in there. But it's good to be here. I could talk about Washington, D.C. and running this country. Oh, man, I'd make a great president. Oh, man, I'd just make a great president. Well, let's talk a little bit about your early comedy life, though, because yes, it's sir. one of the things I'm sure people want to know about. Um, uh, personally, I met you early in your career. Uh, I was doing research on a book in L.A., and um, at the time, you told me, or you said about comedy, young black comedians are not following in the footsteps of their predecessors, like Flip Wilson, Red Fox, and the older comedians. America is not accepting what kind of that kind of humor now. Comedy is more serious. What we try to do is to take some of the problems of the world and look at them from a fresh or different side. It's more observation and opinion. You look at the bad things and turn them around to see the lighter side. Black comics are doing basically the same thing. But because we're black, there are some added things we can do. Still, we don't tell jokes like Red Fox or Pit Meek Markham used to do. Of course, we all have characters that we do and that sometimes touches on more black type humor. A few years have passed since then. Um, you've gone on to become one of the most successful comics in the United States, I think, and one of the best as far as I'm concerned. But um, I think so too. What do you guys think? Well, yeah. thank you. Well, once again, so, I think you interviewed me maybe 30 years ago. Yeah. Once well, again, the, time has changed again, totally. Yeah. Uh, when I started comedy, uh, we were doing jokes, basically clean jokes, all clean jokes because what we had to look forward to was getting on The Tonight Show and Merv Griffin and, and Mike Douglas and, and shows like that. Uh, times have changed now and thanks for HBO, uh, uh, Deaf Comedy Jam, and people can express themselves differently. I, I do clean humor, but some people, nobody did it better than Richard Pryor, let's put it like that, okay? Yeah, he okay. was blue, okay? But I think you should do what's honest to you, just be honest to the people. So times has changed right now again. We've gotten into a situation like we never thought we'd be talking about a black president. No, not at all. No, so you see, in times fact, people, that was a joke. That, that was so a joke back then, right? Yeah. And, so, and now we take, you know, conceptual thoughts about just talk, talking about, you know, I could make a joke about watching television, watching the commercials, you know, like when we grew up, how much sharper does a razor blade need to be? It's absolutely a lot of little things like that. Every year they come out with a sharper razor blade. That's how I think about stupid <laughs> stuff like that. You know, when we, we grew up, we had a single edge blade, didn't we? People my age. Then they come out with a double edge sword. Then they had the Gillette said, we got a Mark III turbo. <laughs> then shit came out with a Quattro. Gillette came back with fusion. Remember, you used to cut yourself shaving, you got a little nick. Now you cut yourself shaving, look like you ran through Venetian blind, you know? And, it's, <laughs> and people want to know what tribe are you with, you know? And stuff like that. So we sit around, we make, we make jokes about everything, just little things in life. We make a joke about all of the, what you can see on TV. You can just, the, the government, uh, parents' problem, like the kids today are different. You, you notice the kids that grew up now, they just, they don't do the things, with it. it's just different. They don't celebrate the holidays like we did. Even like a Christmas, let's say. Remember when we were kids, uh, Christmas morning, daybreak, bicycles and skates everywhere? You don't see that anymore, do you? No. All the kids are in their room, in their own room on a computer, making a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> See, I take little things like that and I just think about things the kids can do. Like, look at us, we're, we're baby boomers and these kids today, they can do things we never thought about doing. They can talk back to the parents. Could we talk back to our parents? Nope. Now, my mama used to drive us down to the cemetery. My mama drove me down to the cemetery. She said, Junior, this is your plot right here. <laughs> you can use it now or you can use it later. But... <laughs> But times have changed. There's different ways of looking at jokes, observations, and uh, uh, life is good. You know, you just think about life and so many things you can talk about. And you don't have to be, you can be blue. You can be, because I, you know, I can out cuss everybody. Yeah. 
but I don't on stage. And one of the best things about your comedy is that you don't do that. You don't, it's not necessary for you to do that to be funny.